Gonzalez Manufacturing borrowed $27,000. Part of the money was borrowed at 6%, part at 8%, and part at 10%. Now that, that's his interest that he has to pay on the money he borrowed. Okay, the annual interest was uh, $2,260, and the total amount borrowed at 6% and 8% was twice the amount borrowed at 10%. Use Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination to find the amount borrowed at each rate. Okay, that needs to be read a few times. But, Gonzalez Manufacturing borrowed $27,000. Got that. Part of the money was borrowed at 6%, part at 8%, and part at 10%. We've got three groups of numbers, three groups of money. So now, I can do this. I can let X equal the amount of money borrowed at 6%. And Y be the amount of money borrowed at 8% and Z be the amount of money borrowed at 10%. And so we do know one thing first that the total amount of money borrowed was $27,000. Even if we don't know anything else, we know that. So now, the annual interest was $2,260. Now, what was the interest? If this was the total money borrowed at 6%, then the amount of interest Gonzalez Manufacturing has to pay is 6% written as a decimal times the total amount borrowed at 6%. Oh, and I should put it down here because I skipped a line. So the total amount of interest on the Y dollars borrowed at 8% is going to be 0 0.08 times Y. And the um, uh, amount of interest paid on the Z dollars, which is 10%, that's the interest rate, is going to be 0.10 times C. And so just the interest paid or due is 2260, which ups the amount of money really that he borrowed. He's going to have to pay an extra 2260. And that's probably only after one year. Okay, now we're told one more thing. The total amount borrowed, total amount borrowed at 6% and 8% was twice the amount borrowed at 10%. Okay, well, the total amount borrowed
Now that sets the total amount borrowed at 6% and 8%. Well, the total amount borrowed that's the total amount borrowed, is going to be X plus Y. That's the total amount borrowed is 6% and 8%. And that amount, the total amount borrowed at 6% and 8%, was twice the amount borrowed at 10%. So the amount borrowed at 10%, is Z. So the total amount borrowed at, at, at 6 and 8% is twice the amount borrowed at Z, at 10%. There. So we now have our system of three equations in four columns. Here it is. X plus Y plus Z equals 27,000. The total amount of interest 0.06x plus 0.08y plus 0.10z equals 2260. And the amount borrowed at 6% plus the amount borrowed at 8%, this total amount is twice the amount borrowed at 10%. So, to get this into system form so we can turn it into a matrix, I'm going to have to do this slightly radical thing. Watch me. I'm going to have to subtract 2z from both sides of the of that last equation so that my system will now be this third line is going to become x plus y minus 2z equals zero. So there's your system. Not only that, while we're at it, if you multiply this entire line by 100, you can move the decimal points over two places and get whole numbers. Of course, that's going to make this a bigger number. But if you do that, then this is going to be your final system that you'll be working with. X plus Y plus Z equals 27,000. 6X plus 8y plus 10z equals, now we're, we've got to multiply this by 100 also. So you're going to have 2, 2, 6, 
zero with two more zeros put onto it like that. That's what happens when you multiply that by 100, that by 100, that by 100, and that by 100. And finally, x plus y minus 2z equals zero. And that's your system that you're going to make a matrix from. If you have this version of the, uh, of the problem, which you're gonna have a few numbers probably that are different, but that's gonna be your strategy right there. I have found this line to be the trickiest, the one about the total amount borrowed at 6% and 8% was twice the amount borrowed at 10%. Now, I was kind of confused when I first read this, which was like last year or the year before. Um, the, does that mean the amount at six and the amount at eight are, you know, each one of them is going to equal twice the amount borrowed at C? And then finally, no. I mean, the total amount borrowed at six and eight is just going to be X plus Y. But that equals two times Z. So I don't want to take away your fun. I'll do this for you and email it to you. But you should work on it. Try to figure it out in your own mind. And on paper, it'll be good practice. 